Actually, the business of energy production. Um, with the cost of wind and solar energy, especially feeding into the grid, the cost of investing it as well, all of these are falling dramatically. So on paper, it should be a lot easier to connect the over 600 million Africans who are not yet connected to the grid, right? Eh, not quite. It's not that simple. As we heard a little earlier in the hour, there's no shortage of companies around the world that are keen to expand the electricity supply across Africa. But the cost of universal access may be prohibitive. In Uganda's case, delivering universal electricity access will cost the country an estimated $7 billion. That's 20% of Uganda's pre-pandemic GDP. The country's main transmission and distribution firm, Umeme, believes it can lower that cost by nearly a third if distributed mini-grids instead are used. A few hours ago, I spoke to Umeme's CEO, Celestino Babungi. I started by asking him why it's so expensive to get Ugandan households plugged in to the grid. And the grid is still young in Uganda. As you can imagine, only a quarter million consumers are connected to the grid. So to expand the grid to reach all these rural areas um, is costly. And that's why every connection costs you around uh, $1,400. And it's estimated that to reach universal access, we need $7 billion if we have to go to, through the grid. OK. so. The cost is slightly lower, but does that then translate to a much lower cost at the retail side to the consumer as well? Yes. Um, when you use the alternative sources of energy, I mean, when you look at it, you ask yourself, do people need energy? The answer is yes. If you look in Uganda, telephone companies, you have over 23 million uh, telephones. If you look currently, people want to watch television. They want to have their, their radios on. They need appliances that use energy to drive economic development. So the question is, you need to take affordable solutions um, to them that will enable them to translate that into economic returns, and then that improves their livelihood. What we have observed so far is that when you take the rooftop solutions, uh, mini-grid solutions, and for example, appliance financing, where they are paying the capital cost for the equipment over a longer period, you achieve faster access than waiting for the grid that takes ages to reach them. What's, what's the retail cost of electricity uh, of, on, on the mini-grids compared to, to, the, to the national grid? On the mini-grid, you would say, you first look at three options. If people do not have power, what's the cost? The cost is much, much higher. On the mini-grid, for example, the solution which you have implemented in, uh, um, in, in, in central Uganda, this mini-grid, we're looking at an average cost of 20 US cents. On the grid, the average cost is 17 US cents. So the comparatives are not significant given that you have taken advantage of some um, capabilities systems and uh, other costs that would be born outside the grid system which again drives to this need for an integrated solution to leverage on the capabilities of the of the of the main grid um, main grid uh, equipment and systems plus also there's there's a health benefits that we're not talking about because essentially with giving people access to, to electricity through these mini grids you're also looking at these other benefits that come through from displacing use of say kerosene for example or other biofuels like firewood and charcoal as well yes we are seeing that and already in the area we had already connected over 200 consumers in that again providing them with appliance financing we saw them taking advantage of that um, at the moment, the, the sector regulator decides what the, the power tariff should be over a certain period of time for, for grid-connected electricity. But as mini-grids become more and more prevalent in Uganda, do they come under the EPRA tariff regime or do they need some sort of special different uh, price mechanism? Yeah, anything currently that is below one megawatt, you don't need the regulated intervention. However, we are seeing the regulator picking interest in this, but also from a policy perspective, the Minister of Energy we know mini grids can run as high as 35 cents per kilowatt hour uh, outside the footprint. But for us, what we see is what's much more important is deliver the mini grid to leverage on your cost, put in equipment that can actually actively use that power to reduce the cost of um, the cost of generating this power. And actually, consumers, if you compare, they would prefer to pay a, a higher price in the short term as they improve their well well being. Next door in Kenya, we have at least um, 100 operational mini grids that are either operating or essentially are in the process of being constructed and put up at the moment. What do you think the total addressable market for mini grids in Uganda is like at the moment? At the moment, there was an estimate of around 400 mini grids in the electrification plan. Um, given the expansive, expansive nature of uh, 
how Ugandans live sparse from each other. So the estimate is 400 over the next 10 years, combining that with um, the solar home systems and also the, the expansion of the grid. 400 mini grids and a $4 billion opportunity.